afternoon, depending on what what part of the world you're, li you're living in and what part of the world you're watching from. Wherever you are, you're really welcome. It's great to have you here as we continue our noonday reflections. Um, I'm not going to tell you what the weather's like in Greystones today, although the sun's shining, but I'm not telling you that because um, you get bored. So um, anyway, hard questions. You know, I'm part of a home group that we meet here on a Tuesday night. In fact, we met here this Tuesday night and uh, we always have a wonderful time. It's the most, well, we met via Zoom. It's the most incredible group and sometimes they've got hard questions and they seem to think I know all the answers and I know very few answers. Um, on Tuesday night, they had some hard questions. But a hard question I want us to think about today, a question that people have raised with me over the last few weeks. In the midst of our pandemic, in the midst of our world, closing down and our routines been shaken about our lives been shaken um, and about the health of the world um, so through these unprecedented times the question has come up is that are we in the last days is jesus going to return soon that's a huge question isn't it a really really big question and of course as we read the bible um, we read about many things that are going to happen um, Earthquakes and wars and rumours of wars and pestilence and all sorts of things that are going to happen leading up to the return of Jesus and that is absolutely true. So it's not unnatural to ask questions like that or to think things through like that. The problem is we can't really know. So are these the last days? These are unprecedented times of course, but difficult things have happened even in the very recent past of of plague or war and the same questions have been raised and of course those are good questions to ask but we can't really answer them so is there an answer or what can we say to that in one sense yes these are the last days the biblical writers frequently use that phrase the last days to describe the time between jesus departing the earth and the ascension and returning again when he comes a second time and he is coming they see these as the last days. We have right back at the beginning in Genesis when God had a plan to unravel uh, the curse of sin that had come into that place. And all the way through the Old Testament, God's plan has been uh, revealed and ultimately in Jesus, his work, his life, his death and his resurrection to undo, uh, untangle the, um, the awfulness of sin. And so these days, waiting for Jesus to come are the days of grace. So these are the last days. We're waiting for him to come. He has done his work. He has died on a cross for our sin. He has risen again to defeat death. Um, and we're waiting for him to return. But we can't really know about the last days in a sense. We can't really say when Jesus will return. Mark chapter 13 says this. Jesus answered, but about the day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. So be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and he puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you don't know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. So Jesus is telling us, and he's told us in a number of parables, that only the Father knows when that last final day will come. Even the son doesn't know when he will return. And so because we can't know, because we can't really know when the end is coming, we must live not only knowing that these are the last days, we must live not only as though it is the last day, but we must live as though it is the last moment because we don't know when he'll return. So we must be alert. We mustn't be fine sleeping. We must be ready when he returns. So what does it mean to be ready? 
Well, for anyone who is not a Christian, anyone watching this broadcast today or whenever you may be watching it, if you're not a Christian, if you're not a follower of Jesus, if you've not committed your life to him, being prepared means trusting in Jesus. Believing that he loved you so much that he died to pay the price for your sin. That is what it means being ready. So will you get ready and trust in Jesus? And for those of us who are Christians, those of us who have put our trust in Jesus, those of us who have placed our lives within his, what does being ready say to us? What does that look like? Well, Jesus has given us the task to do. Isn't that the story that he told? When the owner of the house leaves, he gives all his servants things to do. And Jesus has given you and me something to do. It's the Great Commission, of course, isn't it? To go into all the world, to tell people about Jesus, the good news, make disciples. That's what we're to do. That is the task that we're given. An amazing task. He will help us in it. He'll be with us in it. We'll use his power to do it. But that's what we've been asked to do. When the disciples were originally given that task, you remember the story at the very beginning of Acts? They were told that and then Jesus ascended into the sky, into the heavens. And it says that they stood there staring into the sky. He disappeared, he was gone, and they simply gazed into the sky. And it took two angels to come along and say, hey guys, he's gone. He's gonna come back. They'll come back in the same kind of way, but have you not got work to do? And they returned to Jerusalem to start spreading the good news of making disciples in Jerusalem, in Judea, to the ends of the earth. So that's our task for you and me to do. There's something else that we need to do though. Paul, when he's writing to the church in Thessalonica, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, he says this, the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night. And then Paul goes on to say, therefore, encourage one another and build one another up. Because we know he's coming, this is what we need to do. We need to encourage each other with all the great promises we have in the word. Build each other up, help each other, be there for each other. Jesus is coming soon. He tells us that in the last few verses of Revelation. He says, look, I am coming soon. And then that beautiful final prayer that says, come Lord Jesus, come soon Lord Jesus. Do you want him to come? Is that your prayer? Come Lord Jesus. But in the meantime, until he comes, we must not get distracted. We must not become complacent. He has given you something to do. Are you ready? Today we're going to pray about those kind of things. We're just going to think about the, the task that he's asked us to do. About our role in encouraging each other. Or maybe for someone watching this today, maybe a prayer of commitment to follow him. Maybe you haven't thought about that before. Maybe you'd like to take that step. Maybe you look at the world and the crazy world in which we live and think, you want a rock to stand on, you want a saviour to call on, you want a friend to hold on to. This is our Jesus. Maybe we could incorporate that in our prayer time as well. And then um, we're going to leave some silence for you to pray yourself. And then we want to think about people in prison. That must be a hard place to be in times like this. Prisons can't close. It must be difficult to socially distance yourself. Thinking about prisoners thinking about staff, thinking about, um, thinking about people who feel they're imprisoned, maybe in their own homes, maybe in their own minds. We want to pray that he will set the prisoner free. So let's join together to pray, shall we? Let's all pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for the gift of prayer, which is a beautiful gift to all of us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word that tells us that you're coming soon. And we really can't wait for you to come when every eye will see you, when every knee will bow before you. Come, Lord Jesus, come. 
Father, we do want to pray for those um, who may not have their faith placed in you, who may be trusting in other things. Father, we pray that you will give them the grace to see you as the God who loves them and who gave himself for them. Lord, we thank you for the wonderful Easter message that our sins can be forgiven, that we can have life in all its fullness and for all eternity with the God who made us. No better place to be, no better one to be with. So Lord, if there are anyone listening to this and they have not put their faith in you, Lord, open up a door to allow them to do that. And then we'll just leave a moment's quietness, will we, for anyone who'd like to pray, however God leads you to pray, let's do that in this moment's quietness. And Father, we want to pray for those who are physically imprisoned, prisoners all over the world. It must be so challenging to be in establishments like those. Father, we pray for prisoners and for staff. That you will be, that you will be there, Lord. We pray for those who are governors and other authorities, Lord, that you will give them wisdom to know how to manage things, how to manage people. How to manage expectation, how to keep safe and keep well. Father, some of us can't imagine what needs to be prayed for in situations like that, but we lift them up before you, Lord Jesus, and say, let your blessing be poured out on all of these people in all of these places. And Father, we pray for those who maybe feel imprisoned in their own homes, Lord, it's hard to be stuck inside. If you've got a young family, or you're used to being out and about and working. But Father, we pray for your grace to be, to be poured into those situations, Lord. And people who feel imprisoned will hear your voice, the one who came to set the prisoner free. So Father, set them free from the burdens that they feel and the isolation that they may experience. Set them free, Lord Jesus. And Father, we pray for those who are imprisoned in their minds, those who are struggling with this whole situation, all the different facets of it, Lord, but enough to keep your mind in turmoil or to bring your spirits low. Father, we pray that you would be the great, the great physician, the great consultant, the great friend, that people might know, Lord, that you're with them. That you're the God of the whole universe and the God of our mind and our hearts. Nothing is too difficult for you. So, Lord, for people like that, wherever they may be, Lord, we place them into your care, into your loving arms. So, Father, wherever we are in the world, Lord, would you show us what we must do? that we might do it. Father, help us to be people who are ready, who live like today is the last day, the last moment, in expectation and with great joy. So Father, we come and we pray all these things in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. So again, thank you for joining us. And again, if you'd like to talk to me or you'd like to talk to a church leader of any sort, please contact um, our, our church or myself and all the details are on our website. Um, if you've got questions about faith, um, again, please contact us. We'll be very happy to, to answer those questions um, if they're not too hard and we can help in any way. That's what we want to do. We want to encourage you and to be encouraged through this uh, strange time. So we'll meet again tomorrow at noon, and until then, be blessed.